Well, here I am again with this uh, enlarged BSA A65 engine, which is, of course, 750cc, and it's got the SRM pistons and barrels on it. And uh, I just had to double check on my photos when I stripped this engine, actually, because when I went to fit these studs back into the barrels, which had to be removed to get the head gasket off when I stripped it, I screwed them back in and was a little concerned that they didn't seem to bottom out. Uh, there's threads showing there and a sort of wider diameter section starts probably about a centimetre above the head gasket area and I thought oh these aren't screwing in as far as they should but I had a look at my photographs of when I stripped it and sure enough they were like this. You can't get the head gasket off unless you remove them because the holes in the head gasket are too small to pass the larger diameter part of the stud and I thought why have they done that and I think what it is what it's all about is the size of the bore to get the 750 cc 79 millimeters instead of uh, 75 which is standard if I remember right to leave or allow for a substantial enough and strong enough bit of head gasket at the stud hole adjacent to the stud hole they've gone down to a smaller diameter on the stud there because if that head gasket had holes large enough to pass over the studs here there'd be very very little at the stud holes to uh, make a seal with the cylinder head although the cylinder head obviously uh, has to pass over these studs anyway but I think what it's all about this head gasket is very thick as well I think it's all about just maximising what available strength you can get on the head gasket in that area and I think that's why this has been done. Another thing, I changed the piston rings because the gaps seemed rather large. The, the uh, cylinder bores and pistons looked fine and the, uh, the fit of the pistons in the bores was fine but the uh, gaps on the piston rings looked a little bit on the large side to me so I got a new set of rings and fitted them. And although the compression rings, both of them, have their top sides marked as such, there was no mark on, the, on either side of the oil rings. But there was very, very definitely a sharp or sharper edge on one side than there was uh, when the oil ring was turned up the other way. With a very, very slight, you could only just make it out, uh, chamfer on, on the edge. Uh, the easiest way to sort of tell actually rather than look at it, I looked at it through a magnifying glass but rubbing me, running my finger over the edge, edges of the oil rings, one edge felt knife sharp and the other one didn't and uh, I put the knife sharp edge facing downwards but there was no marks on the oil rings to tell you which was the top face or the bottom face but I put them so that the uh, really knife sharp edges are facing down but to look at them not just at a glance but look at them you know quite intently you might miss that because the chamfered edge was minute um, but I've put that facing upwards so that's where we are now next up I'm going to put the cylinder head on bolt that down and uh, fit the valve gear the push rods and so on and then I'll just be left with the primary drive components to deal with and uh, it's a Friday, so I think by the time we've got the head on, and the rocker gear, etc., push rods all in place, that's going to round this week off. <laughs> 